Some biological and anatomical terms have more than one meaning depending on the context. One such term is membrane. All biological membranes, regardless of the specific type, serve as barriers to keep distinct environments separate and to control what is permitted to cross from one environment into another. For example, biological membranes serve to separate distinct contents within eukaryotic cells. They surround organelles and control what molecules can exit or enter such organelles. Biological membranes also surround the perimeter of cells. Often referred to as the cell membrane or plasma membrane, such membranes control what enters or exits a cell. At a much broader level, biological membranes can refer to the barriers made up of cells of a tissue or multiple tissues. Such biological membranes are properly called tissue membranes. These tissue membranes line internal passageways and chambers that open to the exterior environment. They line sealed internal cavities which are not open to the exterior environment. They cover the surface of your body and they line joint cavities. Having already discussed epithelial tissues and connective tissues in our last few lessons, it is timely to pause and introduce the topic of tissue membranes, primarily because the tissue membranes of the human body are all composed of connective tissue with a partial and or complete epithelial lining. The human body has four such membranes, mucous membranes, serous membranes, the cutaneous membrane, and synovial membranes. Let's examine the four tissue membranes of the human body now. First, let's discuss mucous membranes. Mucous membranes, or mucosae, line internal passageways and chambers that open to the exterior environment, including those in the digestive system. For example, the lining of the oral cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, and the small intestines and onward are all mucous membranes. The lining of the respiratory tract, including the nasal cavity, trachea, and bronchi, as well as the reproductive and urinary tracts are all mucous membranes. Because mucous membranes involve epithelia, it should not be surprising to find a variety of epithelial types lining mucous membranes. For example, there are mucous membranes with simple columnar epithelia, such as the goblet or mucus secreting cells seen here lining the small intestines. There are also mucous membranes with pseudostratified columnar epithelia, like those lining the trachea or windpipe. The oral cavity's mucous membranes possess a stratified squamous epithelium which is kept moist with mucus produced by numerous salivary glands. Some mucous membranes are also supported by multicellular mucus secreting glands located deep in the submucosal tissues. For example, duodenal glands called Brunner's glands support the mucous membranes of the small intestines. Other notable mucous membranes include the distinct transitional epithelium of the urinary bladder. In mucous membranes, the connective tissues immediately beneath the epithelium is a loose connective tissue or areolar tissue called the lamina propria. Second, serous membranes. The serous membrane is a tissue membrane of loose areolar connective tissue lined with a simple squamous epithelium. Serous membranes line the sealed internal cavities of the trunk, which are not open to the exterior environment. These epithelia, derived from mesoderm, are sometimes called mesothelia. There are three serous membranes. Two of the serous membranes are found in the thoracic cavity, and one is found in the abdominal pelvic cavity. The serosa of the thoracic cavity are the pleura, which lines pleural cavities and covers the lungs, and the pericardium, which lines the pericardial cavity and covers the heart. The serous mesothelial membranes have two layers. Each has an outermost parietal and an innermost visceral layer that are in close contact with each other at all times. The parietal layer of the pleura and the pericardial membranes line the inner surface of the thoracic cavity. The visceral layer, or serosa, covers the outer surface of organs projecting into the body. For example, the visceral layer of serous pericardium covers the heart, and the parietal layer of serous pericardium lines the inner surface of the fibrous tissue that surrounds the pericardial cavity. The primary function of any serous membrane is to reduce friction between the opposing parietal and visceral surfaces when an organ moves or changes shape. Friction is reduced by a watery serous fluid formed by fluids diffusing from underlying tissues. In the abdominal pelvic cavity, the peritoneum covers the surfaces of enclosed organs such as the liver, stomach, and intestines. 
Again, the outermost parietal layer lines the inner surface of the abdominal pelvic cavity, with the visceral layer lining the surface of the visceral organs. The serosa can be clearly viewed as the outer layer covering the stomach in this micrograph showing the layers of the gastric wall. We will discuss in much greater detail the anatomy, physiology, and even some pathology associated with these serous membranes in those modules that deal with the respiratory, cardiovascular, and other relevant material pertaining to the abdominal pelvic cavity in upcoming modules. Third, the cutaneous membrane. The cutaneous membrane is the tissue membrane that we are most intimately familiar with. It forms the skin that covers the surface of our bodies. The skin is the largest organ of the human body weighing approximately 8 pounds and covers 22 square feet in surface area. It is the main organ of the integumentary system, which we will study in Module 5. Like all tissue membranes, it consists of a connective tissue covered with epithelial tissue. The connective tissue is called the dermis and is made of loose areolar tissue reinforced by underlying dense irregular connective tissue. The dermis is covered by a stratified squamous epithelium called the epidermis. In contrast to serous or mucous membranes, the cutaneous membrane is thick, relatively waterproof, and usually dry. Finally, synovial membranes. Skeletal bones contact one another at sites called joints or articulations. Joints that allow free movement are surrounded by a fibrous capsule and contain a joint cavity lined by a synovial membrane. Unlike the other three membranes, the synovial membrane consists primarily of areolar tissue and an incomplete layer of epithelial tissue. In freely movable joints, the bony surfaces do not come into direct contact with one another. If they did, impacts and abrasions would damage the opposing surfaces and smooth movement would become almost impossible. Instead, the ends of the bones are covered with hyaline cartilage and separated by a viscous synovial fluid produced by fibroblasts in the connective tissue of the synovial membrane. The synovial fluid helps lubricate the joints and permits smooth movement. In summary, tissue membranes are biological membranes that line passageways and cavities of the body. They consist of connective tissue lined with epithelial tissue. We will revisit these tissues in more detail as we learn about those body systems with which they are most closely related. Join us in our next lesson as we return to the topic of the four tissues of the human body in Module 4.6, in which we discuss the general characteristics of muscle tissues.